Hi everybody, happy Tuesday. It's an unusual day for us to pop up a Tuesday, but got to fit it in in between the cricket. Um, so there's no test match today, tomorrow or Thursday. It starts again Friday, so you, anything that I need to do has got to be today, tomorrow or Thursday. Um, this is aimed... I just want to say again, thank you, Kerry, for this card. Looks at me every day, all day, and I love it. Thank you. Um, today's live is really aimed at the new starters. Because um, it must seem a bit like a minefield, you know, when we're talking about things, signatures and this and that. What, we must be speaking a foreign language. Um because it's easy to, to forget how little we we knew. We all knew nothing to start with. So I'm sorry that some of the more established junk journalists may find this just a little bit... I know all that, you know. But we've got to start somewhere, so let's start at the very beginning. Now then, what, go, what are you going to put into your junk journal? We'll just have a quick review before getting on to the juicy bits of making things that go in the junk journal. So I've dug out some things here, and when I say dug out, I really do mean that I've been out through places uh, I haven't been through for a long time, found some interesting things. Um, like Flo, she found something today that was uh, that's really going to inspire her. So I have, um, like you all, downloaded stuff, papers from, uh, from the internet, from Etsy. Uh, these were part of that big giant mega bundle uh, that I suggested was you know good value for money and I think this one I'm pretty sure is called um, Scottish Gardens in the Highlands which is a the writings in French we've got flowers that we could never grow in the Highlands but I'll overlook all that that's its name uh, and those are the papers that I've chosen to use along with um another set and i can't remember for the life of me what it's called um but i will find out and i will put it under the uh under the video and the other ones that i've used so i've used two sets of six papers from that uh, journal paper e set and then these ones are from my porch prints and there are sets of i think it's eight papers in sort of a shabby pink a shabby blue uh, i think that's a shabby pink one there uh, and there's a shabby i don't know antique i suppose you could call that and there's also there is also a green i can assure you of that but i don't seem to have it maybe i didn't print it out but i thought that with the papers that i'd chosen which are these now th this came included in the kit but if you um, have only downloaded six pages and you want to make something this size following on from this video in about an hour after this video mr fix it's done a video for you on how to resize your your images and print multiple images on a page which i think you'll find handy i know some of you will know it but some of you won't so so with the colours from here, I thought that this went quite well. I thought that that also went quite well because there's quite bright pinks in there. And I also thought that that antique looking one, that one went well because it's sort of brownie around the outsides. So I've just pulled those out, maybe to make pockets with or um, belly bands, tuck spots, you know, just to have some contrast. So, those are the papers. Now then, in addition, I've got more and more and more of that. That's still the papers. That's an envelope that was in with the, uh, the paper set. And that's a little ATC cards, as they call them. Uh, so that's those papers. I've got so much stuff I need to show you today, honestly. this I could do the desk 20 times this size. Now then, as well as printing it out on ordinary A4, and when I say ordinary A4, it's A4 sized. I understand that in the States that's letter size. That's fine. 
you just print it out on whatever your normal copy paper size is. Um, for us, when we print it out, we get a border around here. And I have got the facility on my printer to pr um, print without any border to fill the entire page. But when you do that, it just expands it. And so you might lose some of these little bits around the bottom. So that, I'm OK with that for most things. But for this, I was happy enough to have a little border up each side that I'll just trim off. And this I have printed, as you can see, onto tracing paper. So right away we're introducing some nice different texture to just the ordinary paper. So yeah, that's lovely. Let's put that in our journal. Um, that's just a sheet of paper, just so I could show you just how pretty that is. It's so delicate, this pattern. It, it really is lovely. Um, and I thought, no journal is complete. Wow, Kerry, there's your, Kerry, there's your card just gone flying. Uh, no journal is complete without a couple of pieces of coffee stained paper. The um, thing I'm working on at the weekends at the moment now, I'm using white paper with it, which is very unusual for me. Along with many other people, we use coffee stained paper. And if you look back on the videos um, on this channel, you'll see Mr. Fixit did a extensive video on how to coffee stain paper. So we've got two sheets of that which will go into our journal. I also found on my travels these two envelopes. I have no clue where they came from. Actually there's a green one as well. Um, they're a funny sort of almost handmade paper type thing. Um, I, don't, I don't know where they've come from but they may or may not make it into our journal. And then we get into sort of interesting things, really. Um, I'll leave that to one side for the moment. It's up to you what you put in your journal. It's a, it's a personal thing. It should be a personal thing. And you shouldn't feel pressured to put things into it because other people do. Um, I'm going to show you some choices here. And some of the things I, I just don't ever put in my journal because they're not me, you know. Um, but I'm going to show you what your kind of choices are, as it were. So we've talked about the um, the tracing paper, and that's it. Ordinary tracing paper. Nothing fancy about it at all. Just ordinary. And I, I print it out on my inkjet, and it prints fine. Now then this, this was something else that I turned up this morning and I know where this came from. It came from a charity shop that Mr. F has found at some stage. Uh, they're called Botanical Note Cards and it cost him two quid. And I mean, look at the box alone. It's just so pretty. Um, but when you open it, there's four different designs. So I discovered this morning. Um, of these really, really gorgeous botanical prints. You know, the back isn't so flush, but there's nothing wrong with the back either. Um, and it's perfectly plain in the middle. So if you put a bit of paper on there, you, you've got yourself a flip. So I've left one of those out. Actually, I might leave two out and I'll show you why later. And pop those away. Um, I have also included this larger envelope. Now you see now I'm getting just a, maybe a few too many um, um, this sort of thing but with something like this you can sew that into the middle of your journal and fold it over not that way probably and it's something else that's just something interesting. You can slice down there and then you'll have yourself a little pocket. So it's worth considering. Now, yesterday <laughs> I did something that I would deem to be a little naughty. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm just not a thief. I haven't got it in me. I couldn't do it. My conscience wouldn't let me. Um, but I went to B&Q, which is one of our large uh, do-it-yourself shops here. Kind of like Home Depot, I think, probably. And they have a Cellophane sticking to it. Uh, they have a wallpaper section, 
And it says on the tray at the front of each kind of wallpaper, please take a sample. It doesn't say take a sample to try this at home and see if you like it. It just says, please take a sample. Well, you'd be rude not to. So I took samples of a few and four actually. And then my conscience got the better of me and I bought a roll of wallpaper because <laughs> I just couldn't walk out of there with just samples. It would have just been wrong. So what I've done this morning is, um, this is one of the ones that I've got and it's just beautiful. It's a real aubergine with a beautiful metallic. Is, is taking wallpaper a hanging offence? <laughs> oh, you're so witty. <laughs> it could be on crime swatch. Have you been thinking of these since yesterday? No, it's spirit the moment. Oh, blame me. <laughs> um, it's a glib hour. So what I've done is I've just cut that off to the height that I want. And I've already ascertained in my own mind that my uh, journal is going to be A5. So it's going to be half an A4. It's going to be A4 folded over. So that's going to be the height. That's going to be the width. So I wanted to cut this wallpaper off at about the same height. Don't be too harsh on yourself if you just get it too short or too... You just don't want it any taller than that. If you get it shorter, that's fine. Don't worry about it. And I used quite a bit of the width of it and I folded it over and it'll go in the journal down there. And I might just stick something entirely there and make that into a pocket. Um, and same on the other side. So that's that. Now, a lot of people use doilies. Um, I've got a pack that's got three sizes in. This, I think, was the middle size. And the small one was just too small. Uh, this one will go into the journal there. Like that. It'll be sewn in like that. So you'll see half of it there. And on the other side, you'll see that half there. Now, I have to admit, doilies are not a thing I add to journals. They're, they're not my thing. They always seem to me to be a little bit fragile, and I want my journals to last a long time. And I can't bear the thought of something in a journal not functioning properly for a long time. But we'll include it in this one, so you've got an idea of what you want to include in yours. Now, another thing that a lot of people include is music, a sheet of music. I have a book that I've got several books of music, actually. This is really old. Well, I say really old. It said 1953. And the older I get, actually, that doesn't sound so long ago. Um, but it's this is the colour that it is. I haven't inked or dyed or anything. It's just this. It's gone, this lovely brown colour. And it is also quite fragile. I don't know how long you people have been with me, but if you've been with me for a little while, you will have seen me use music paper and uh, decoupage over the top. And I do like that effect. You can still see the music coming through, but it just breaks up that sort of um, plainness, if you like. So for this, we've got Clancy lowered the boom. And I have read the words just in case it includes any non-PC words because we have got a book, a book that is particularly bad for that. Um, but it seems to be just about some drunken Irishman. So I think we're all right with that. Then these are the papers um, from the, the kit. They're really pretty. They have, they're very pastely actually. They've got these lavender through to purple rose pink through to this quite deep cerise and around the edge we've got a very soft blue there and the pages from the other set which I can't remember what it's called um, they're sort of vintage I would say cat hair he likes to climb on my table when I'm not here um, and once again this sort of light blue but I think they're both very much in keeping with each other you know, I don't think that's jarring on me. So I've got three. <laughs> Poor Mr. Fix it standing there with a cup of coffee for me, and there is not a square inch of room on this desk. Oh, and it smells so good. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, so I've got, I've used three of those. 
back and front. Three images from one, three images uh, from the other. That's forget-me-nots are my very, very favourite flowers. I love them. I, I love all flowers. I'm a real, real girl when it comes to flowers. I absolutely adore them. And I'm really lucky because Mr Fixit buys me flowers very regularly indeed. And I love looking at them. I never tire of looking at them. So that's those. And then this, I'll show you what this came out of. Another one of Mr Fixit's finds. I'll show you this, these uh, na uh, doilies while we're here. 36 assorted paper doilies. There's the little ones. That's the one I think we used. And then there's a large one as well. And we got those from the pound shop. So you get 36 for quid. You know, you can't really grumble. Except, as I say, <laughs> I don't really use them. But, the oh yeah, that's where it came from, the music. 20 song hits, uh, 1953. <laughs> Times change, honestly, don't they? They really, really do. Uh, so this from Save the Children cost him £1.50 and it's facsimiles of the full newspaper of things that have on the front page they've got women of the last century who've done quite remarkable things. Um, it took me quite a long time to get past this because they're all really interesting. Um, I've chopped that one up. New Girl drops in at the palace and it's uh, Mrs. Thatcher. Uh, this one is when Nancy Astor became our first lady MP. Princess Grace dying. Such a shame, very beautiful woman. Uh, first woman to fly the uh, Atlantic, Amelia Earhart. And this one is Ruth Ellis, um, who in this country was the last woman to be hung. Um, I think there's still a bit of controversy around that actually so there we go there's plenty left there plenty um, and I couldn't take the front page from any of them Had I took a page from inside and I took the whole width of the paper and I folded it in on itself because it's quite thin um, and I'll just check before I put it in that I've got the right size that I want. But that's that. Now, the other thing that I would like to include is um, just a piece of um, paper pad. We all have them. I know you've got them. We all have them. We all have so many and we don't know. We don't have a clue what we're... they fall into two categories. One, I love those so much I can't bear to cut it up. Or two, I don't know why I bought that. I, I don't know where I can use it. I know, because it happens to me too. So this one is, it's called The Promise, and I think it's a wedding one, to be honest. But it's so pretty, I couldn't resist it. And I kind of like one that's got a back and front pattern to it. Some of them in here don't. They're just plain on the back. You all right, Mr. F? Yeah, we have this first casualty. Oh, no. Pat fell over the dog. Oh, is she all right? Is the dog all right? <laughs> yeah, the dog's fine. Is Pat all right? I do believe so. Oh dear. A swollen ankle and a fat lip. <laughs> oh my goodness, she's and done a it. Crazy knee. She, oh, she's done it properly then. She's trying to type comments with a remote control. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Oh dear, I think if this continues, you perhaps need to go to the doctor. I don't think that's... So I quite like this. I, I'm not... Um... Sorry, Pat, I will be thinking about you as I'm doing this. But I've got to crack on because there's just so much to do. I really am sorry you've hurt yourself. There's that one, but I'm not sure that's exactly right. I mean, you don't want everything matchy-matchy. You know, really matchy-matchy. But um, that is pretty this is a very pale pink i'm not sure that you're picking that up particularly or oh, there's this one which is a very nice gray and it's got kind of trees on the back i'm thinking that one so let's just have that out of there and use it one sheet at least <laughs> well be half a sheet actually probably um let's just pop that down there so let's see if we can get something like a journal put together, shall we? Just just roughly, 
nothing too drastic nothing we're not sewing anything in today i would always recommend that you leave the sewing in to the last to the end because then if you really don't like a page next to another page you can turn it round or if you want to go sewing you know you can't really take your whole junk journal to the sewing machine it, you just can't maneuver it so um leave the sewing till the till the last would be my advice so let's have a look at what we've got just going to cut this down a little bit um i'm going to make it shorter than the rest of the pages because i quite like that i quite like some being shorter some being longer so i'm going to cut that down to there um if i had a pencil i would mark that but, Oh, come on. Have you seen my, have you had my pencil? Huh? No, this is ridiculous. There are a number of pencils if you'd like Thank one. you. One maybe with the, it's sharpened, possibly. <laughs> You're so fussy. Thank you. So I'll cut that down to there. And that's the height that it needs to be so let's just do that now oh there goes the mod podge on the floor so let's square this up yeah sorry sorry i'm fussy i am fussy yeah but i just need to um i'm just going to come down a little bit actually make it smaller all the way around so i'm just going to square that up there So we didn't even get to use quite a whole page of this. <laughs> it might come in later. I'll put it on the possible maybes for things that we can use later on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. Shortening on with pencils now in case I get another request. Exactly. Well, you never know when it might come. My Mod Podge is actually lying on the floor down there. If you, if you could find somebody Excellent. to pick it up. So what have we got? We've got all of this stuff and something that I made yesterday that is just the start. It's the start of our um, journal. So there's all the bits I think that we're going to put in it with regards to paper. Um, and this was part of my raiding mission <laughs> from b and Q. I I don't know if you can see how pretty this paper is. It's it's so it's so pretty. It just kind of had to come home with me. Um, and so what I've done is I've put that onto the back of one of the, the pages that um, I've downloaded. So it's just glued on. And you probably have seen the uh, little video that I took. Sorry, I'm no videographer um, of, of, of how I decorated it because I just wanted to get a feel before I came on trying to advise anybody of, of what I wanted to do. So another thing that we as junk journalists and as new people get further into it will realise that you end up with roomfuls of book inners, pages and pages and pages of books that you've taken out of, of other books just so you can get the, the book board and the spine. And you've got book guts everywhere. Sounds horrible, doesn't it? But it's true. So I thought if I could find a way just to use up even a couple of pages would be a help. So I made this tag. I couldn't help myself and I went and decorated it there, but there's there's no need. We're just going to make the basic tags today and then you can go away depending on your level of experience and decorate them, not decorate them, whatever. But we are going to have it going to have these flowers on it, the text and whatever, and then it's up to you how you decorate them further. This paper here is some of that stuff that I showed you from my porch prints, and I think it picks up the colours really quite well. This, just pretend that's not there because I've just decorated. I couldn't help myself. Uh, in the top of the uh, this um, tag, we've got some sari silk. Now, as a... As a starter out into the world of junk journals, there are some things that are essential um, 
that's not true. You can get by without them. That make your life easier. And sari silk is one of those things. Um, I always get mine from a lady on eBay and I can't remember her name, but I will put a, I'll ask Mr. Fix it if you'll drop the thing in under the, it's Sue's Crafty Creations, is it? Something like that. Oh, the sari silk yeah, from Etsy. From Etsy, yeah. She delivers really quickly within the UK. I, I, I don't know about the US, I'm afraid, but in the UK, this lady that I'm going to suggest to you, she has lots of different types, although at the minute, getting sari silk is really difficult because India's just closed down. They can't get anything out. Uh, but ordinarily, she she's really quick and her stuff is fabulous. So I've used two different colours there just to pick out the colours in here, which, cons which pick out the colours in there. And that just fits into that pocket, which we'll also try and get made today. Now on here, this is what's called a belly band. I never used the term belly. I was always brought up to believe that belly was a, a crass sort of word. We used the word tummy. <laughs> you never had a pain in your belly. You always had a pain in your tummy. Um, and so it's taken me quite a while to get used to calling this uh, thing here a belly band, but that's what it's called. And it is literally a band that generally, but not always, goes from the bottom of the page to the top in a vertical manner like so and it's i've sewn mine you don't need to sew yours if you haven't got a sewing machine um and it's it's really well attached at the top the bottom and depending what you're going to put behind it you could just put one big card behind it in which case then you wouldn't stick it in the middle but i've stuck it in the middle because i've put these two little envelopes in it and if I didn't stick it in the middle, they were just going to be rocking and rolling around and they'd fall out. So these little envelopes uh, were, well, one of them, this one was in the kit. Um, so I drew round it, made myself a template and did this other one out of the paper and I downloaded from my porch print. And then I sewed over the top of it one of the little ATC cards that came in the kit. I'm going really quickly, I know that. Sorry. But I just feel like I've got a lot to show you. So inside, I just... Uh, the top is shut. It's closed by a little Velcro uh, pad, circular pad, which I got from AliExpress. And inside, I've just put some... Um, this is copier weight, coffee dyed paper. And I've put, I don't know, one, two three four sheets in there and I've just sewn down the middle with my sewing machine haven't made it haven't done anything to it uh, although you can and it just fits in there and that is a journaling somewhere for somebody to journal and on there I've just used a stencil and gone through with my ink pad which I'll show you later and they shut down like that Maureen suggested we call it a tummy tuck a tummy tuck that's much better that is much, much better and so sensible because he took things in it. Yes, I like that. Uh, and then I decided that I didn't actually really like those pockets, um, envelopes. I didn't like the, the shape of them. They didn't work out well, really. You see, they're not, they just don't... I didn't like them. So I'm going to... If I have to use envelopes again in this journal I won't be using that template but that is a good tip for you if you have a you downloaded a set um, from the internet and it's got things in you know like sometimes you get bobbin winders or uh, dressmakers dummies or any shape envelope shape or tag shape that you think you might want to use in the future cut it out and then draw around it onto a piece of card and keep it like this these are my two tag um, templates that I use all the time. Uh, and and they're just, just handy. They are the right size for that journal. So as you see, I mean, it's absolutely, I've just used it and drawn around it. So, and there we go on the back of that page is more of that lovely wallpaper. So we've made a start. We have got a start. So I think what I'll do is I'll make a start on, on some of these bits. And then if we've got time, 
I'll have a look at how I'm going to um, arrange those papers in there. So I just wanted to show you the other ones that I've done as well. I've done that one and this is this is where we will get to today. Um, no embellishments, no fluffy stuff, no nonsense, just just that. And really, what is wrong with that? It doesn't need any more. I don't I don't think it does. It's really pretty. So and I made these two um, smaller ones as well. See, actually, I've used the, <laughs> I've got the text upside down there, but I didn't notice that previously, and I'm quite happy to let that go. I mean, it's it's fine. And on the back, I've backed them with coffee stained uh, paper, like that. And if you recall, I have a set of um, Sizzix uh, thinlets die cuts um, that. Darlin Hilda was good enough to buy for me. Thank you so much. And I use them all the time, absolutely all the time. And after I'd picked some out from the paper, I was left with this, which, you know, you can see I'd cut them out and that's what I was left with. And I thought, well, they are perfectly good stencils. Perfectly good. I mean, they're not going to last forever, you understand, but... I just put that on there, got my ink, my ink pad, and just gently did that. And there you go. It's there, but it's not there. It's lovely. Uh, and these two are the, are the same. They're, they're there, but they're not there. And they're not going to hamper you writing on the back. Because sometimes I really feel that people forget the purpose of the journal. Yeah, I know. We all know that it's so as we can show off all the stuff we've got. Um, it's just beginning to fray. All the stuff we've got and, you know, how clever we are, blah, blah. But that's really not what it's about. It's about somebody purchasing this or yourself and using it to write in. That is really what it is. Um so you have to make sure that you give people places to write. And sometimes that's kind of like inventing places. Uh, you know, for example, that would look prettier with a with pretty paper on it. But if I put that on it, they can journal on there. You, know, you could probably get your entire, you know, today I went to mum and dad's, we had roast beef for dinner, whatever. I'm just fantasising here. <laughs> About roast beef. <laughs> About roast beef, yeah. Um, and you see, I... Uh, I put lots and lots of things into the ties at the top, which always adds interest. So let's get cracking and make some of those, shall we? For a start, let's do something practical rather than waffly. I like practical better. So this is a, a book. I don't know if you lot know. I'm sure you will. Uh, the Elm Tree Quilt something. What's it called? It's, it's the Elm Tree Elm Creek Quilt Sampler. And I bought it because I thought it sounded really lovely to read and there's a series of them. But, you know, I never got around to it. So its, it's cover's now been turned into um, a lap book some time ago and I'm still left with these pages. But I like them, though. They're, they're nice. You know, dictionary pages, whatever, they're really thin, aren't they? Um, but these have got a nice heft them uh, um, so it's talking of food how was the chili do you really want to know i'm still suffering actually i'm still suffering and what and worse than that yesterday we had fish cakes but today we're back on the curry with the chili again to finish it off and i think it might finish me off to be honest but that's probably loads more information than anybody needs <laughs> tasty though it's really tasty it's really tasty right so we're just gonna get a bit of kitchen towel to so i don't get too much glue on my uh, cutting board i'm just going to stick two sheets together because uh, one sheet isn't enough but two with the glue will give us um the thickness we need because don't forget we're going to back it with 
coffee stained paper so we'll have that um, thickness to add as well so I'm just going where the text is and stick that over try and stick it fairly square otherwise uh, one one will be if you're cutting from this side you might be a bit wonky on that side sort of thing so just keep it a little bit square it's not too important um, this sticky you know the print stick whatever you want to call it glue stick is perfectly adequate for doing this it's going to be sewn around and decoupaged on and whatever so this is really um, perfectly adequate it's it's kind of just holding it together till we get it to the sewing machine really so there we go we've got three lots of double thickness um, sheets ready to go now then, the next thing is which um, napkins to use. Uh, I'm sure I'm, I can't possibly be alone in this, ladies. Please tell me I'm not. But I've got so many napkins; it's it's embarrassing to be to be honest. But you know, when you're looking for something that's absolutely, you know, that's what you need. Um, I couldn't really find very much of it, however. I found this and I used half of it on the other napkin. I love all this, all of this. So I've saved, I've saved all of that. Um, and I think that'll go quite nicely. I also used that as well. And I've saved all this blue because I don't know what I'm going to use it on, but it looks like it could be useful. I used that, but I thought that was a bit brash. I thought it was a bit blousy, really. But you see, this is where difference in people comes in. Um, I think they're just a bit on the blousy side. Um, somebody else will think, yeah, that's perfect for me. I've got these, and I'm not saying if... Are you laughing because I'm calling somebody blousy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I realise that's not very good. I realise... These addresses on a postcard, please. <laughs> I realise when I said it, that's like really offensive to somebody. <laughs> oh, I don't mean to offend you. Sorry, guys. Uh, that's a bit aqua. This is gorgeous. I love this napkin, but it's a little bit on the aqua side. This is more of this blue that I'm saving. <laughs> so, I just don't know why. <laughs> but it's like the most important scrap in the world. And then, oh yeah, I've got this as well that I'm saving. Look here. <laughs> It's madness, isn't it? <laughs> All I can say is if I don't use them on this project, they're probably never going to get used because they're going to go in the box and never see the light of day again. Hilda and Lynn would like to know what blousy means. Showy. Showy. Um, it can also have a sort of nasty con connotation where you, you mean cheap. Sort of, yeah, cheap. Loose and flowing. <laughs> Is that the dictionary definition? Yeah. yeah. But pertaining to a person, it's more mm, showy, let's say, but not in a nice way. Right, so I think this one's okay. It's actually manfully carrying on. <laughs> I like this blue and I like the roses. It matches with the back of our um, pages. That one's a particularly lilac one that I've decided to show you, but that one there, I think it matches perfectly fine. I've got a real fit of the giggles. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting against just giggling. Um, just before we disappear down a manhole of decoupage, etc., I just want to show you the roll of wallpaper that I did actually purchase yesterday from B&Q, which is this one that's it there isn't it pretty I can use that for loads of things so be prepared to see some of that 
coming at you, at you fairly soon. Right, so yeah, where was I? It's okay. I'm getting all, all warm now. I've been cold all day, but I'm really warm. So where's my, here we are. Right, so I'm gonna cut some out of my uh, double. I'm gonna do it in the middle because I can't see the point in trying to. Uh, I'm just gonna get that fairly square along the bottom. Because I know I've got one the wrong way round before, but um, not having it square is much more of a crime. Now, if you want to make yourself a template whoops, for your tags, each journal that you do, you might need slightly different tags. You know, you might need slightly longer, thicker, whatever. These are good ones to start with, though, I think. And they measure from the bottom to the very top. They are six and a half. And from side to side, they are three and a half. So if you draw yourself out a rectangle, that's uh, six and a half by three and a half. And to some fairly sturdy card, I would use cardstock. It doesn't have to be white. Any pattern, you know, that cardstock that you've got that you can't stand, uh, that's the thing to do. And then I have a I have a couple of contraptions, but I'll show you. I'll show you them both. This is an old uh, credit card, and you can't really tell, but these are different angles. Um, and so what I do is I hold it up like that, get it right on the edge there, right to the top and just cut it off. And then because that's a different angle to this one, fold it right up, bend, you know, flip it right over and put that like that and cut that off. And then you'll have two perfectly equal uh, angles because doing it by eye, you think it's going to be easy, but it isn't. Um, and then this is the smaller tag that we've got, um, these ones, the blousy tags. <laughs> um, and I'll give you the measurements of the, of the smaller ones. Lynn says she couldn't look it up because she's used all her dictionaries in journals. <laughs> yeah. uh, four and a half inches in height and it's two and a half inches wide now those are just two you will accumulate lots and lots and you might actually you know it's a good idea probably to write on them six and a half by three and a half and then you know um and this one's four and a half by two and a half pat's gone and got her ipad so she's back with us oh poor old pat honest i don't know what you're doing girl uh, and this is a, well, it's a piece of really thick acetate that Mr. Fix has put me four different angles on here. So, but no two are alike. So I don't know. make it easy for you. Yeah, that was, that's the one I think that's the one I use. Pat wants to know if you're using your credit card because you spent a lot on crafting materials. Yeah, pretty much. That is pretty much the state of affairs in this house. So you do the same there. You snip the end off, fold it, you know, flip it over so as you've got the exact same angle. And make sure of that on your templates because if your templates are wrong, everything then is going to be wrong. I could number the corners for you could make it easy. It's all right. We're doing all right. I'm just going to have a little relax, see what people are doing. Are people bored because it's really easy? Marion Webster says, unattached, slack, loose, relaxed. Oh, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> Not anyone I know. No. You can't keep me down for long. No, that's a good thing. That is a good thing. If you only, yeah. Oh, my word, Pat, that's hilarious. But sadly true. Um, so let's cut that out. Am I boring you all? Is this boring? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to make it make sense to people who who bought all this paper and they really don't know what to do with it. Ros says she's not bored at all. Oh, thank you, Ros. Thank you. Donna says no, never bored. And Pat 
and it says um, I'm enjoying it. Oh good. That's a relief to know. So if you do enjoy this and if you've just happened on us by chance, uh, we do have a sister Facebook group. It's called Miss Paint-A-Lot's Junk Journal Group and you're very welcome to pop along and join in. We are a really nice and supportive group of people and um, periodically one of us comes up with just a genius of an idea and we had one such occasion uh, with Lynn Whitman who, I wasn't waving at you there, I had a fly in my eye, with Lynn Whitman that I can just think off the top of my head other people have come up with brilliant ideas too. Where's my other double pages gone then? With your pencil. With my pencil. Where are they? Oh, here we are. Um, yeah, Lynn this morning ran out of green um, scrapbook paper and she wanted to die cut some foliage and butterflies and stuff. So, in, what am I doing with that? In desperation, she cut up, um, was it Cezanne? Uh, it? Yes, it was. Yeah, uh, a Cezanne page out of a, a coffee table book. She put that through the uh, die cutting machine. And oh my goodness me, they are just gorgeous, really gorgeous. So, as a consequence, as well as gathering all this stuff together, I have also been looking through my art books to see what I can sacrifice. Um, Monet's looking favourite at the moment, I can tell you. I think I might just, um, he might just end up as a load of flowers. I'm sure he'd quite like that, actually. Especially if there were water lilies. He'd be impressed. He's going to be impressed. <laughs> Michelle's joined us. Hi Michelle. And Hilda says not bored, Deborah says never bored, Nick says no, Queen says no, not boring, Sammy says not bored. Oh that's a relief. Jen says I have already at work so can't chat, but we'll watch as I can. Don't get caught, Jen. Natalie says she's at work too. Oh no, see so we've got the people working. And watching. And then says not boring. Oh well that's excellent news. So I would recommend that you make up a few of these. You can alter the sizes like I say but I would say that you make four. Four of these up in this size. I've already made two so I'm ahead of the game because I knew what was coming. Um, so I've made two and I'm going to make these two up as well and I'm sure they'll go in our journal. I'm going to throw this away. I know loads of you would keep that for making uh, snippets and stuff but I've got to throw something away at some stage. It's just getting ridiculous. Um, and I'm just going to cut out. I've got two of the smaller ones and I'm just going to... I don't think I can get two out of there but I'll give it a try. I see somebody on the group the other day was saying they were doing a journal on Jane Eyre. Yes. Um, this would be a good idea for yeah incorporating use, some of the book in a in a journal. Yeah, it would use the pages out the uh, from Jane Eyre. I think it was Linda Cartwright. I think. Was it? I think so. That's a good memory. No, I'm not going to get two pages because it's going to be off off the thing. So I'll have to make myself another double page. I've done it again. I've done it again. That's upside down. Come on, girl. Helen says she's sticking some pages together as she watches. Excellent. All you need now is turn the volume down and you're on a winner. <laughs> Why are these pencils? I don't like them very much. They're uh, sketching pencils. Yeah, they're very they're, they're four. Well, I've got four B and two B. They're very soft. So it's two B or four B. Two B or not four B. <gasps> I don't know what one I've given you. It's Maybe. very soft. It's very possibly a four B uh, or a six B even. The the Dale are only sketching pencils. You could have a carpenter's pencil. 
I'm all right, thanks. I don't know what happened to my, to my pencil. See, this would be wasteful if you were doing this out of um, a paper pad or scrapbook paper or whatever. But because I've literally got millions. Well, no, I hate it when people say literally when they don't mean literally. But I have got loads, so... Um, I don't, figuratively, got millions. Figuratively, I have millions. So let's just glue us up a couple more pages. I've put a fleece top on today because it I really was cold earlier on. And now I'm just about cooking point. Lights in the studio, that's the problem. Yeah, you do. Um, oh, I've lost my rubber nut. Here it is. I've, I really have got a lot of stuff on, on my desk today, more than I, I normally have a lot of stuff, but I've got loads more than normal to try and give you some ideas. I was just rubbing that line out that I errantly made. I just thought I saw a rude word there, but no, I'm all right. that wouldn't do. I served supper with the three tricks I picked up from Cook to stretch the food for three into a meal for five. Wow, that's a good a, a good tip, isn't it? Yeah, we usually do it the other way around. Stretch <laughs> a meal into five into two. Yeah, we do. We eat too much. We have healthy appetites. Or unhealthy appetites, yeah, well, <laughs> which depends yeah. who you're talking to. Right, so one, once I get this cut out, I just want to say something else. Which is not surprising. Hilda says she's never come across anybody who explains the way you do, Fiona. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, right, let's just talk briefly about journaling cards and what they are and why are they called journaling cards when these are called tags. Well, it's just kind of one of those things. If this didn't have these corners knocked off, it would be a journaling card. It's, just, it's the same size, the same everything, just it hasn't got the corners knocked off. And it is would then be a journaling card. This is a tag because it's like shaped like that at the top. So if you're looking for homework for this journal, and you don't have to be, I'm, you know, I'm just, it's a suggestion. Pat, don't feel that I'm saying you've got to do this because I know you're halfway through a million things at the minute. But, you know, if you really are new and you're kind of wanting to keep up, I would suggest that you cut yourself out these two tags Maybe even one, you know, five and a half by three. So as you've got a nice papa bear, mama bear and baby bear set of tags. And also some journaling cards. You know, make that square three and a half, uh, six and a half, maybe by four is quite good. That's quite a good size, a handy size. And decorate them in a similar way to this so as we can... When it comes to filling the journal up with ephemera, we've got stuff already. We're cooking. Uh, but that's just a suggestion. You, you know that, don't you, when I say it would be good to do this and that and the other. It's, they're all just suggestions. So I'm just going to take this very thick and soft pencil off from around here. Because it's looking a bit not nice. Thick and soft, it must be my pencil. It's coming off all right, so there we go. Now, I don't know how many of you new folk want to sew uh, or, you know, are in a position to sew. Not everybody has a sewing machine. I would say, and I think the other ladies 
maybe not all, but some of the other ladies would admit that it does add something extra to the journal. It adds a bit more, like you've really spent time caring about the content. Um, so I like to sew. You don't have to sew. And any sewing machine will do. You know, uh, I think... Was it Aldi, little Aldi that was sewing, selling sewing? I think it's Aldi this week are selling sewing machines and they're really inexpensive. If all you want to do is sew paper, you don't want to be a dressmaker or anything like that. Buy a really, a really cheap machine. But what I would say is keep it serviced regularly. Um, I, you know, mine goes off, well, mine goes off annually to be serviced and it does get a lot of wear. Right, not boring, created by Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Helen. I'm sticking some pages together and Hilda, lovely Hilda. <laughs> oh, thank you, Corin. Corin's a teacher, I believe, so I hope we get it right. <laughs> so we've got these. Let's put the um, decoupage on. I'm making a bit of a meal out of this now, to be honest. So I think I'm going to put most of that flower on there. So I'm just going to tear around it. I don't want any of that um, doily type effect. Now, just for the new folk, everybody else knows this. I know, even the new people, I'm sure. But most of these decorative napkins that you get are three ply. That's, they've got three um, layers of tissue to make them absorbent for their intended use. For the use that we are going to give them, we don't want the three plies. We just want the top one that's actually got the ink on it. So you just need to split them off from the bottom two like that. They go in the bin and then you're left with just this one. And when you put the decoupage gel on it, you'll be able to see the words coming through. And I, I absolutely love that effect. I love to see the text and I like it on music paper as well, when you can see the background um, coming to the foreground. So where's my... So I'm just gonna get myself a bit of cling film. Saran wrap. Yeah, that's right, it's saran wrap, I think. Um, I don't know what they call it in Australia. Anybody Australian watching? Uh, so it's just a bit, you know, nothing fancy about it. It's ordinary pound shop stuff. Um, my Mod Podge. This is running out. I mean, <laughs> it's been running out for about six months and now <laughs> it's just half or nothing in there now. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to, it's it's watered down and I would water it down even if it was brand new. Uh, I don't want it full strength because if it's full strength, it sort of clings, the, the tissue clings to it too much and it gives you no second chance, if you know what I mean. You've got to be bob on the first time. So I've got a straight edge down there, so I'm going down this straight edge here. If it wasn't going down a straight edge, I would have torn it rather than uh, cut it because straight edges in the middle of things don't look very nice so then get some more mod podge watered down mod podge on your brush start from the center and work out that is uh, good advice for however large a piece of decoupage you're doing work out work your way out and that's just crinkled up a little bit there so i'm just going to pull it straighter yeah, flow's popped on hi flow and Lynn says she refused to sew before you watched your videos. <laughs> when you explained why, and I understand the finished look and additional texture, she started sewing. Do you th and do you think it's worth it now, Lynn? See, you know, really, because it does take extra time and it's extra faffing around, which I'm very good at. I'm, I'm the world's best faffer. So there we are, we've got that onto there. And I'm just gonna take my cling film, 
pop it over there which provides a barrier between my finger and that very very delicate wet tissue so I can really apply a fair bit of pressure there just in case there was any wrinkles <laughs> which of course there wasn't <laughs> I put them on yesterday perfectly but this one wasn't quite so good <laughs> and then just take that off and you'll be nice and flat and perfect There we are. Now Flo says sewing is her favourite part. Is it really? Mm, I'm not sure it's mine. But I do like it. Shall I put some of that on there? It did come out, you know, it did come out. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just go for it, shall we? Don't know why else I'm saving it, really. So I'm just making some odd shape here. And maybe put that up there. And maybe a tiny little bit down there yes that'll be fine i think there's no um kind of golden rule for this this is what feels what looks nice to you and if you if you follow that what looks nice to you you won't you won't go far wrong everybody has different ideas of what they want to put where and what goes with what whether you want pastels or brights or clashy colors or 70s colors or you know whatever i'm just going to bring this down there because i'll try and get that edge onto there actually might as well try and use it lynn says yes in answer to you is it worth it yeah and deborah says your sewing video helped me get my machine out she'd not used it for 41 years is it a new home because they seem to just go on and on. So I don't know why it's just um, decided to be awkward today and go a bit wrinkly, but it'll be fine. So let's just take this again. Let's get rid of those wrinkles. at that um, and I'm just going to put this tiny little flower down at the bottom it's amazing how much the words come through yeah I know it's great I love it I really love it so yeah I'm just going to put that down there about there try not to always hog the edges I know it's easy to think everything's going to go around around the edge but Sometimes it's nice just to have something not quite on the edge. So there we are. That's that. And I think that's a, a really nice, oh, it's sticky, sticky. I think that's quite a good match for the paper in our book, the download uh, paper. So there we are, that's one done. Leave it till it's dry and then cut these bits off if you are fastidious about your uh, decoupaging and it'll come as no shock to you to know that i am <laughs> what i do is i leave it overnight so it's really really dry and then i take a sanding pad one of these this is really fine and once it's dry, I just go over it ever so gently and it knocks off any of the raised pieces off it. And it somehow just makes it sink down into the paper. It's just like it's really all, all one. And I like that. Um, I like that it does that. So that's just a little idea for you. So that's that one. Let's carry on. Oh, no, I haven't finished that. I'll leave it till it dries and do it and then do the second part. Uh, so this one's going to have um, little birdies on it. Oh, that's where that little thing came from. Came from there. Green says she enjoys sewing her journals if she does wonky stitching. Perfection isn't for me nowadays. Well, I think there is a, um, a real nice charm to be had. You know, it's supposed to be a junk journal. I, I can't 
get over trying to make everything perfect. I just, I, I really honestly wish that I could. Because sometimes I drive myself mad and I spoil my enjoyment of things because I need it to be perfect. And, you know, I'd, I'd sooner throw the whole the, a page away, even if it was nearly finished, if I made a mistake. And that's just daft. I know it's daft, but I can't get it through my head somehow. So the odd bit of wonky stitching, yeah, I just wish I could live with it. I just really do. So I'm tearing this out, guys. I'm not cutting it because if you cut it, you get a very sort of straight edge and your eye picks it up. Believe me, your eye will pick it up. Um, and then once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. Whereas if you tear it, it just sort of blends nicely into the background and there's nothing for your eye to rest on. So I'm just going to tear this kind of down there. So we've got two little birds. Was that a Bob Marley song? I think it was three, oh, three it was, yes. Three, I've knocked one off. Right, so... It's purge. Yeah. So I've got that one that could go there quite nicely. And then I've got that one. I don't want to be too far up there because I've got my tag and stuff. Um, I could maybe just use some of this precious background stuff that I've been saving, eh? How about trying some of that? Sammy says, my, mine's always wonky sewing, laughy phase. <laughs> and Helen says she bought a very small sewing machine from Aldi, which was £25, reduced from 30 uh, She can use it for paper. It does straight zigzag and buttonholes. And what else do you need? You need nothing else. You need absolutely nothing else. I used to make quilts, and I must admit, I really do have a very fancy schmancy uh, sewing machine. But now I use straight and zigzag. That's it. I don't even use a buttonhole, so that would be superfluous for me too. Um, right, I'm going to stick these two bits on. I'm just going to peel the top layer off. Um, don't don't think you can circumvent that uh, taking the, the layers off. It just won't go on at all if you try and stick all three layers on because the glue really only goes through the bottom layer, then you'll just end up in a right hash. But always tear it out before you separate the layers, otherwise... It, yeah, it's just it easier never that work. way. Never work. So I'm just going to put that there and that there, and I think that'll look uh, nice. I think so. I'm going to have to resolve this Mod Podge issue. Because <laughs> it's getting to the stage where I ain't not got none. Um... I don't care, it's not really the most expensive thing in the world. It's just one of those things, you know, would you like something really pretty and sparkly and, you know, paper, in other words, or do you want to buy Mod Podge? <laughs> I'll buy the paper, thanks. So this is just wanting to wrinkle on me and I don't really want it to so there we go show it who's boss eh it's a really pretty napkin that isn't it eh I like it I like it a lot Corrine um, says glad she's not alone Sammy it's best to make it look intentional I've decided <laughs> yeah go for it <laughs> I think that's probably true yeah if you're not going to be straight make sure you're well wonky well wonky yeah, absolutely. Embrace the wonk. Embrace the wonk. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. That's another one ready to dry. I'm going to just get my cling film on that because it's a bit... It's a bit not the best decoupage I've ever done in the world. Isn't it funny how when you're not on camera yesterday, I did, did these and they were so flat. But look at that after you've put cling, cling film on it. Nobody would ever know. Apart from you lot, obviously. But you wouldn't tell on me to the decoupage police. 
Right, I'm going to put him there. Or her. I think he's a him because he's very colourful. It's usually only the boys that go especially colourful. Look at my beautiful plumage. My favourite, I think, in that department is the booby bird. <laughs> it just goes to so much trouble. It's just so excessive. <laughs> oh, dear. The other day in our garden, we had some woodpeckers, which is quite rare. Couldn't believe it, actually, when I saw them. I was delighted. Felt very lucky to be able to see them. Afraid all my fancy plumage has been plucked these days. Yeah, you're you're well from fancy now, to be honest. Thanks. You're welcome. But you're still lovely to me. I don't think that needs any more on it uh, than that. Because we're going to put some stuff, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Time is an hour and a quarter. Come on. This is ridiculous how time vanishes. So, for anybody that's new, do you think... You, you would go away and be able to do this by yourself. Or if not, what is it that you need me to show you so you would be able to do that? Because I'd like really, I'd like you to make two of the large ones, two of the smaller ones, and a couple of journaling cards in this style. If you've got the stuff, of course, don't rush out and never rush out and buy books to cut up have a good look through your bookcase first right so this one is going to have a little bit of this on it um, <clears throat> I think those ones just in that top corner are nice uh, the other thing I would say about decoupage is Usually, if you're going to be decoupaging on something, make sure that the background is quite light. Otherwise, you just it just deadens the tissue. You can't actually see much of the pattern if you were to put it on black or a dark colour. So always try and put it onto a light colour, a light base. And it's also good if you can match the background of the napkin with uh, whatever you're going to be sticking it onto. Because then it really does sort of fade away into the background. I'm obviously sticking light blue onto cream. So, you know, it's, it's going to be visible. But so I've got a straight line down there. Let's just have a look. That's okay, I think. I think that's okay. Right, so remove the additional layers. One of these days I got around to making a journal for myself. Well, for my Etsy shop, should I say. Yeah. I thought you want to say something. No. Just put a comment. In. Yes. A stinging comment. No. Oh, okay. What is it? <laughs> you can probably see it. Uh, it doesn't come up yet. I can't get this apart. Use the tape. Trick. That's it. Right. So that's gonna go there. Let me just check that I'm right here. And that, that can go there then. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Um, it still doesn't come up. I don't know why it's not bringing your... So put your, your decoupage gel of whatever flavour variety you're using down first. Pop that. Pop it down. And that straight edge there I'm putting onto my straight edge. 
and then brush it out from the center to the edge and over the edge like so um, then get your cling film pop it over it and that way then you can apply a bit of pressure to it to get any wrinkles out that there may be in there and then when it pulls off it's beautifully flat it's like there was never any wrinkles there at all so same down here now the other thing that I want to show you today before I disappear is how to make a pocket so you can then um, be making pockets in preparation for our next live so we're all going to be organized having said that I don't really know if I've got time to be honest I can't keep you forever maybe it'd be better if I came on again tomorrow what do you think Mr. F? you're that? out tomorrow aren't you uh, but you'll be back no well I'll be back but yes no, probably not, depending on the weather. Car boot day look, tomorrow. Looks rainy tomorrow, so yeah, does probably it? not. Yeah. I think it'd be better to, to do another live tomorrow rather than keep on with the now. Yeah, I think, I think so. Same, same time, three o'clock ish. Yeah. Because if the car boots off, I may go around the charity shops. Yeah. So there we are, that's that. Right, so we've got those done. If you're doing your homework as well i'm suggesting to you and it's only a suggestion you know i'm not i'm not the blinking junk journal police um and i'm certainly not bullying you <laughs> which i've been accused of um so let's get these here who was asking if anybody needs any napkins Please shout. Oh, that's sweet of you, Hilda. Thank you. Um, and perhaps as if you've got a couple, if you'd like them. Oh, lovely. That's that's just so nice. And Roz looked for napkins on Sunday when she was out, but couldn't find any pretty ones. Uh, are you in Canada, Roz? She picked up a couple of packages, but not thrilled with them. No, just kind of make do ones. Um, and Corinne says she'll try the cling wrap. She'd given up on napkins. I don't until I until I found about the cling wrap. I'd given up too. Uh, and Pat says she had the train trouble. Found some on Etsy. They sell them single or a pair for a couple of pounds. There is a shop on uh, the internet called Aggie's Craft Shop. Uh, I think the lady is Polish. I think, um, and I've had a lot of napkins from her over the period. Um, you, you buy them singly, as you say. Um, which is fine because after I've used one I kind of get tired of it so I don't really want to use the whole packet so I'm just tidying this up but it might need a bit more tidy up I mean this one's still wet so what I'm going to do now with these we'll finish these off and then we'll call it a day at that um, yeah if you could if you, in the feed if you could put if you need napkins please and between us all, we'll see what we can uh, come up with. Uh, Flo says she's got <coughs> some to post. Okay, I've got some I can post. Hilda said she had, didn't she? Yes. Yeah, Hilda just said, please send me a message on Facebook of what you'd like. I have stacks. Yeah, and I, I have some and as Pastor well. And said, which craft shop, Fiona, I missed it? Aggie's Craft Shop. A-G-G-I-E-S. Aggie's Craft Shop. Is that the one I've just done? Oh, that's it. Times are getting bad now, I'm talking to myself. Right. Um, I have a stencil here, and I, I know this is something else that, as a new starter, you might not have. I don't know what to tell you, really. There isn't a shortcut for it, particularly, unless you also have a die-cutting machine, uh, and then you can employ... Aggie's craft shop at the moment says it's under maintenance. Oh, so does it? I wouldn't rush there. Just oh, that's a shame because she had loads. Um, as I showed you before, this is the waste from the die cut that I uh, that I put through the machine. Um, but I also have this itsy bitsy little um, stencil that was cut out on a silhouette machine. 
um, you might have one or you might know someone who's got one and what I'm going to do is just pop that on there get my ink pad out easier said than done here it is I thought I'd left it somewhere quite handy and I'm just gonna go lightly I don't want to go over the napkins so I'm just gonna take care to place that and I'm just gonna go lightly I don't want this to be too heavy I don't want to take away from the beautiful napkins really and Corrine says Ninny's napkins in Canada that came up last time so that must be worth it what might not have done actually it might have been Nana so it's it doesn't really want to go over where the um, where the Mod Podge is but that's the kind of idea that I'm trying to achieve and I'll hold this up for you in a second <laughs> um, can you see that sort of, sort of rose shapes some leaves down here so you just get quite a nice effect with it um, so it, you know it's not critical to the whole thing just finishes it off I think so I'm really not pressing very hard because I really don't want this to be too dark I want a whisper of it just a whisper but it finishes it off it's it completes the whole tag and you can do the same uh, on your journaling cards exactly the same exactly exactly let's put a little bit in there so there you go the camera isn't making a very good job of picking that up if I'm honest with you but it does look quite pretty in actuality I've done that one for heaven's sake I'm cracking up I'll put a bit more on here you'll probably see it more clearly and a little bit down there it doesn't like going on where the Mod Podge has been Maybe it's because it's not properly dry yet, but you see what I'm see what I'm doing. Just put, this is still quite damp actually. Might be flogging a bit of a dead horse here. Now I'm using for doing this. I'm using uh, antique linen. That's the name of the ink that I'm using, the distress ink. I did just before we came on live um, try out this one. Um, tumble glass and I tried it on the back of something I bet you can't find it now here and it was just it's just beautiful look at it it's it's there but it's not there it's a it, I really really like that um, and if I was braver I would probably use blue on here but I just want to show you you know We've got this sort of distressed books, so I think it goes up the brown or the antique linen goes okay with them. So right, that's fine. Now then, the next thing that we really need to do is back them and sew them. Now I'll show you, I'll show you me backing one, sewing one, and and putting the um, ribbons in the top. The rest, my friends, is up to you. <laughs> Um, so I just need some paper to back it with. So how, however many of these you decide to do is up to you, of course. Um, tomorrow we'll look at pockets and uh, tummy tucks. I'm just putting this on to kind of keep it in place, really. Um, it's not 
it's going to be sewn on so it's not totally dependent on the strength of this glue. So just pop that onto there. Yeah, when this is bone dry, I am going to come back in with my, I'll show you tomorrow, with my uh, sandpaper. Just smooth that off so it feels really nice and smooth. Lynn was just offering to cut stencil for people. Oh, how nice! And they'll be doing the same. So they're agreeing to. It'll be the UK and Lynn will be the USA. Haven't we got the best group of people? Absolutely. They really, honestly, you rise above and beyond, girls. So for anybody that isn't in our group uh, on Facebook, where have you been? <laughs> uh, the group is called Miss Paint A Lot's Junk Journal Group. So it's quite easy to remember. And you'll see all the faces pretty much that are on here, plus some more that, you know, unfortunately <laughs> they've had to work. Isn't that awful? Um, plus some more people. And honestly, there's just such a supportive and really lovely group so um if you want to join that it's miss paint a lot's junk journal group and you'd be very welcome uh, helen says she's posted the swatch with the old paper on oh thanks and a few other colors along with a collaborative journal page well done helen that's brilliant so hilda and um oh i've got my sewing machine on today blame me Hilda and Lynn have got that covered then. Are you going sewing? Yeah, I'm going sewing. I've got to get my, find my stitch first, that's it. Just doing a straight stitch around the edge. Nothing too fancy. This is a beginner's journal. And if it goes wonky, embrace it. I can't remember who it was now that said their sewing was wonky. Um, but if it does, really try and embrace it. Don't be like me. Don't be so inly retentive about it because it ends in disappointment so often <laughs> so i'm just taking my time and when you come to a corner put your needle in turn your paper around i'm sure you know this and keep going till you come to the next corner keep your needle in turn it around oh i'll get away with one more stitch there i think Take your time, that, that's the thing. It, you know, it's not a race. I'm a bit far away from me, that's it. That's the straightest bit of sewing I've ever done in my life, but never mind. Embrace it. <laughs> I'll really try and embrace it. Uh, and I cut the ends off. Uh, lots of people leave the ends on or just trim them slightly, you know, shorter. I can't be doing with that. I have tried that. I tried one journal like that and it absolutely drove me bonkers. I couldn't bear it. Another thing that you might find, depending on the... Um, what is your default stitch length on your machine is you might want to make the stitch a little bit longer because if you think about it each stitch the needle is going in puncturing a hole in 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 and if your stitches are too close together it'll end up like a postage stamp and you'll be able to peel it apart so maybe just lengthen your stitch uh, length a little bit and i'm just going to ink round this I'm using for this, uh, I'm using a just off white thread. Um, it's a thread I use a lot. I use it in the shabby chic journals that I make. It kind of goes with everything, um, but it doesn't, doesn't take over. Some people like to use black or dark brown because then you can, really can see it and make a feature of it. We're all different. Go, go with what feels right to you. So there we are, we've got this one uh, up to this stage. Do the back 
couldn't boom pull the did you flatten it off the you? oh yes that's a that's true the other thing that happens sometimes is on the front side of your stitching it's nice it's really nice and smooth but where it's punched down through you get these sort of little holes that appear now if you take your bone folder and just rub over them you'll flatten that bit of paper back down again so it'll look and it'll never look as neat as the front but it'll look a darn sight neater so you might find that that just makes it look a little bit better for you like that okay so i'm just going to ink the back as well and then i'm just going to put a little something on the back just to say we haven't forgotten about it so there that's that and i'm just going to use these free stencils really uh, is what they are i'm going to use that big daisy one there so like that and i'm going to be very gentle very very gentle because it's just paper and i have used it several times already so i'm dabbing rather than rubbing i don't think i'd get away well let me try it a little bit but not over the edges so there we are and that's i think that's just pretty anybody can journal over that it's not so deep that you have to avoid it you couldn't see what you were writing uh, and i just think that's pretty so right let's move on to um the lace at the top so line that up on your on your measuring mat or with a ruler if you haven't got one find out where your center point is which is there and just bring it down half an inch i'd say bring it down to there like so and um, get a cutter to make a hole. If you've got a choice, use a, a bigger rather than a smaller. This one might not go through because it's stamped. Oh, it's gone through. That's fine. Um, and then find yourself some lace or something that is going to go go with the general theme of what we've got now i've got this which is a kind of royal ribbon and it's gorgeous no idea where it came from i'm guessing mr fix it found it in a, a charity shop or something somewhere so i'm going to take a piece of that i've got this sari silk which is not that distant to that and i'm just going to tear that in half because that's too wide for what we need um, and you get all these lovely threads which are, are gorgeous and you can keep if you really want to <laughs> you can keep these threads if you really want to and when you've got quite a few in your bin if you just do like that and stick them down and put something on top you've got a really nice embellishment i don't know if you can see that i'm probably talking to myself there you go that's just the waist threads off the sari silk <laughs> <coughs> is it any wonder that our whole entire houses are groaning when you can't even throw away the blinking bits of thread of the sari silk honestly we are mad mad so something sort of similar in, in length to that, but not the same. Try and make it not exactly the same length. And then I've got this bit of ribbon here uh, and I like it because it's got a scalloped edge there, but I'm going to use it I'm going to sacrifice it for my uh, thing at the top. So you can use any ribbon, any anything, as long as you can get it through that hole. I'm putting three different kinds of things in maybe something lighter colored as well maybe that yeah i like that this is this uh, pico edge satin ribbon that i discovered the other day and no didn't even know i had it um it's pretty though it's got a little pico edge so i'm going to try and pop those through 
the hole that we made. I'm going to use my pencil, which is my general fallback position. <laughs> Might have to thread these through one at a time. Then don't want to go. You are asking a bit of the impossible, really, to be honest. But well, no, it's not impossible because I do it all the time. But it's a lot to go through a little hole. You know, is it any wonder that junk journals? cost as much as they do. There's so many hours, hours and hours and hours of work that goes into them. Right, so that's fine. We might have to trim bits off. We might not. I don't know. Um, yeah, I've got a really noisy fly in the house. A fly in the ointment. And I'm going to use, you can use anything. Lace, um, anything at all. Twine, whatever comes to hand, just to tie a bow around here and this is the kind of this is the stage where you wish really that you were an octopus but it's very doable so tie yourself your first knot you know like that hold the things out the way and tie that tightly pulling them up like that as you do and tie that tightly like so Right, and now you can watch me make a fool of myself tying a bow because I'm rubbish at it. <laughs> oh, there you go, that wasn't too bad. So we don't want it quite that large. There we are, and I'm just going to pass that through that bow so it comes out the, the bottom like that. So we've got a little bit of that left that can go in the top of the tag another time. Now, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of these are slippery and in time that would slide off. And you know my sentiments on junk journals not being forever. So I'm gonna use some Fabri-Tac. I'm gonna use full strength Fabri-Tac and just glue that onto there. slide it down and just keep your finger on it for a minute um, if you need to go away or anything put a clothes pin on it a clothes peg uh, will do the job so I'm just momentarily going to put a clothes clothes peg on there and, and that will keep it stuck so guys I don't know what we've achieved today, really. Not half as much as I was hoping I would achieve with you. But you now know how, what I've done to it to make these um, tags. I'm losing, losing all common sense, for heaven's sake. Um, these still need decorating, of course. And if you're feeling up to it, you could carry on and and decorate them as I did uh, with mine somewhere somewhere over the rainbow here it is this is the one that I did previously and you see I just put a, a die cut on there and some just it's three different kinds of, well two laces and one bit of sari silk little butterfly and just for Jen some bling because <laughs> I know you'd like it Jen I know that. Just the bling. You probably don't like the rest, but the bling. Um, so any, you know, if you make journaling cards, you can decorate them. Uh, if you make something like this tummy tuck here, down here, I've decorated that ever so sparsely, really. In the kit, I d I, I'll show you how to do this tomorrow. That's what I'll do. I won't talk about that anymore. And we'll talk about the envelopes, the pocket and whatever tomorrow. Okay. Uh, there was something that just caught my eye over here I was going to tell you about, yeah. 
these flowers in this country we get them uh, from Hobbycraft and they're really inexpensive. It's almost like Hobbycraft's made a mistake with the price. Um, but they're a good, they're a really good match for these. So if you wanted to decorate your um, your tags, etc., that might be the way forward. I would, however, try and keep away from really on the bottom if you're going to get dimensional, because invariably that's going to go in a pocket, and whatever you put in is likely to get bruised, which we don't want. Uh, and the other thing, I get these from eBay and they really are inexpensive. I've got lots of different colours. Um, and if you just put a little bit of lace or something on and a little bow, it's just, you know, these cream ones would look nice echoing that. So that's maybe another idea for you. And they're not expensive. I'm not trying to make you spend loads of money here. So there we are. Thank you so much for your company. I've kept you way, way longer than I intended to. Um... I can't thank you enough for turning out on a Tuesday afternoon. And I know, Jen and Natalie, you're, you're at work, but um, I hope I've provided a little bit of light relief as well as um, doing your job. And for everybody else, I can't, you know, all of you, thank you. And as I say, if you want to join our Facebook group, it is Miss Painterlot's Junk Journal Group. You'd be very welcome. Um, like I say, we have the odd <laughs> amazing idea between us all. Um, I think Hilda and Lynn, Hilda in the UK and Lynn in the US, are sorting out uh, stencils, etc., which is so good of you. Oh, it's blimey. I'm blown away by the love in this group. The, the, you're wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow at three o'clock when we'll be talking tummy tucks, pockets and envelopes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>